Hello and welcome, Mush Puffs, new and old. If you don't know who I am, I'm Dead on Dave, copious lord. But if you do know who I am, well, you know that on this channel we do a lot of different things. Pokemon, wrestling, interviews, all kinds of stuff, but typically in the live type of format. Well, now I want to expand out and do some other things, and I love movies. I love reviewing. I'm a little bit of a critic, but hey, aren't we all? So I've decided what is not happening in the review world. Well, multiple reviewers with limited amount of time. So let's try that, shall we? I'm going to bring you three movie reviewers. They each get three minutes, and sometimes it'll be on the same movie. But in this case, for our premiere episode, it's going to be three different movies in a theme. And since it's Valentine's Day, what better genre than the rom-com. So sit back, relax, and enjoy, because we're starting right now. Ah, uh, yes, it's that wonderful time of year again. Spring's right around the corner. Love is in the air. You feel it. I feel it. We all feel it. And I don't know about you, but this time of year, Valentine's Day always makes me want to... Just kidding. You know, it doesn't matter whether you're in love, trying to find love, or over love. Sometimes watching a rom-com and all of its antics and sometimes mishaps put everything in the most wonderful perspective. So we're going to take on three today. I got one for you. Talk about that in a moment. But I got two other people who want to talk about a couple of rom-coms as well. We have What If Universe taking on 50 First Dates. That's a little bit later. But first... We've got the wonderful Trivial Theater who's going to be taking on Stardust. Huh, that's a rom-com? Tell us why, Trivial Theater. Roll it. Rom-coms really aren't my thing. To pique my interest, it has to be something really outside the box. The movie I'm reviewing is one of that special variety that sort of follows a rom-com story arc, but in a very unconventional way. That movie is 2007's Stardust. Now, this is a movie of opposites. Take the contrast of the age-old trope of two people from different worlds enjoying a picnic, with the bastard son of a princess falling in love with a literal star in human form. A deadly pirate with a fearsome reputation, who is better with makeup and clothes than I could ever hope to be. A quest to find a royal heirloom that will determine the fate of a kingdom, which ends in a rather hilarious slaughter of all the key players. All this comes from the clever mind of Neil Gaiman, author of American Gods, Coraline, and the critically acclaimed graphic novel, Sandman. Our story begins once upon a time in England, in the well-named Hamlet of Wall. A young man named Tristan, hoping to earn the heart of his true love, promises to bring her a fallen star before her birthday. He tracks it across the invisible boundary that leads to a magical kingdom called Stormhold. There he finds that the fallen star isn't a rock, but an actual person named Yvain. Now you may be thinking this sounds like a sappy, goofy fairy tale, and while it does have its moments, it also features a dude being pushed out a window, several divinations involving animal entrails, and a death by ferrets. The story goes on to feature a unicorn, witches, and a pretty accurate take on what a goat turned human would probably look like. Stardust is one of those rare movies for me that blends fantasy, comedy, and romance incredibly well. The romance, although a pillar of the movie, isn't the only thing that it offers. Both big and small plot points are paid off in satisfying ways, and the ending leads you on some fun, interesting paths. The film locations chosen are, to put it mildly, absolutely stunning, and the thought put into small details, like the embroidered numbers on the prince's outfits, is nothing less than cool. The characters are engaging and interesting. To steal a Transformers line, there's more than meets the eye. Michelle Pfeiffer is incredible as Lumia, and Robert De Niro, well, let me just say that I love his character as much in this as I do in Casino or Goodfellas. It's an understatement to say that this movie has an all-star cast. Major and minor roles are packed with talented actors. I'm not sure most people would define this as a rom-com, but in my book, it checks all the boxes. It contains classic romantic elements. I mean, the protagonist literally glows when she feels love. In big and small ways, there's a shit ton of humor as well. The deaths of various princes and the marks left on their various ghosts make me chuckle even after endless viewings. 
If you have two hours and you're looking for a rom-com that's more than just a sappy typical affair, I can't suggest Stardust enough. <laughs> Y'all shouldn't have clicked on this fucking video. <laughs> but that's your fault, not my fault. Anyway, thank you so much, Trivial Theater, for that amazing review of Stardust. And now you all know. If you didn't know, now you know. It's the damn rom-com and a really good one, actually. So thank you so much for the coverage of that. Now we're going to toss it over to, well, me. And I'm going to do this Double Dare style because I've always wanted to. Why? Because Mark Summers was a pimp, yo. So, three minutes on the clock, on your mark, get set, Forgetting Sarah Marshall, go! Now, the movie I'm going to be going with is Forgetting Sarah Marshall, a flick I wish more people, well, didn't forget about, because it's a fantastic movie from 2008 that gave us arguably one of the better sequels that we've had in the past 20 years, Get Him to the Greek, which I highly recommend anybody watching as well. But if you love that movie, you gotta know its roots, and Alda Snow made his debut in Forgetting Sarah Marshall, a movie about a lovesick Jason Siegel who loses his girlfriend of five years, a middling actor, actress, played by Kristen Bell. It's just a great movie, just all in all. We get to see this amazing journey of this heartbroken guy going through all the memories. We can all kind of connect with we all understand what it's like to have your heart broken almost all of us unless you're just a troll sitting in your basement kind of looking like me <laughs> love me anyway great movie there's so much that goes on in it so many incredible actresses and actors in it uh mila kunis russell brand bill Hader. i mean just everybody is in this flick paul rudd jonah hill just funny, funny, funny throughout. It doesn't stop and we get to see these adventures of not only the love sick jason siegel trying to figure out how to put his life back together, but then actually trying to put something into action in one of the worst ideas in history, going on a vacation that he had already booked. It makes absolutely no sense. Why go to a romantic place to try to get over love? No, it doesn't work out that way, especially if <gasps> plot twist, your girlfriend, ex-girlfriend and her new man, who is just an incredibly talented musician and sex magnet, Aldous Snow, happened to be there having sex right next to your room at one point because that's just how life goes. But of course, because it's a romantic comedy, we get to see his new adventure in love with a new romantic interest played by Mila Kunis. Fantastically, I do add, who has her own baggage and her own issues living in this area seeing all the love lost and all that type of stuff it's made her jaded and closed off to love so this becomes a dual story where we get to see redemption from both characters while still getting to see all these other minor characters throughout the flick have all kinds of different adventures as well it's just this wonderful concophony of uh of, of romantic forlorn and and gain it's just a great movie that i'd recommend to anybody especially this time of year so you got to listen to the copious Lord on this pop in for getting Sarah Marshall, because more than likely you haven't seen it as good as it did. And it did do pretty well. It, it, it tripled up its budget, but it was marketed terribly and it didn't get as nearly as much love as it should have. So I give this movie personally 10 hearts out of 10. All right, maybe not. We don't want to go from the top. We'll call it eight hearts out of 10. That's my copious review. That's my three minutes. And now I'm just filling in these last five seconds. Watch me dance. Watch me dance. <laughs> did you fall for it a second time if he did you're stupid no it's okay all right so that was my review you just saw me i'm amazing i should have wore a different hat but oh well let's go ahead and throw it to the third review of the show we're gonna go ahead and toss it to what if universe and what if he took on 50 first dates groundhog date go check it out here we go roll it What's up, it's Bluff Universe, and here's my three-minute review of uh, Fifty First Date. So, let's begin with a few things. I'm not really a romantic comedy guy. I'm more of like an anime weeb and stuff like that, if people know me from my main channel. But I will say that even though I have a dislike for um, Sandler and romantic comedies, I would say Fifty First Dates is actually one of the few things that kind of changed my mind about it. 
One of the main things I actually liked about it was the concept of basically dating someone who essentially forgets what happens on the previous days. It really shows the dedication of Adam Sandler's ca character to keep going on these dates, despite the fact that she'll eventually lose her memories from it. Eventually, he does figure out a solution to the problem, which is pretty clever for his character. Although I do feel that the film does lack a bit, because there are certain parts of the dramatic scenes that are done a bit poorly, but yet the remember this is done back in like 2004, so yeah, sometimes drama and rom-coms around this era weren't essentially not necessarily the best, but I will say that what it fails with parts of its elements of drama, it does make up for its elements of comedy. It is kind of hard to hate it sometimes, you know? Like, even with the bad parts in it, with the drama, most of it can be like overlooked for the most part, in my opinion. I do think that Sam there's a co-worker, uh, Louise Estras, is also fantastic. She's pretty underrated for her small part, but she does stand out for sure. And yeah, sure, uh, Sam, Larry, and Drew Barry more work great together in this film. I feel like the song and music kind of has like a nice tropical feel to it, like the soundtrack fits pretty well. And I do like the beautiful Hawaiian landscapes that you see throughout the film. It makes it a lot visually better, more appealing, rather than having this happen like in New York or wherever setting, because it gives it a nice uh, setting and view you get to see. Most of the film's uh, benefit actually comes from the uh, ROM part of the uh, genre, because the chemistry between uh, Sandler and Drew is somewhat allowing the story to be carried on and allow it to keep going. I will say overall what allows this movie to actually work is because of keeping the focus on Sandler and Drew Barrymore's characters. It makes all the side characters who aren't as interesting be pushed back a bit and it keeps the story going. But for the overall film score I'm gonna give this a 6 out of 10, mostly because I think the background characters could have been done better, you could have had a slightly better soundtrack for sure, and I think for the most part there are different aspects of the film that could have been improved. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed my review, and thanks for listening. Well, there you go. There you have it. Three, four, three. Three by three. I don't know. We're still trying to name this show. If you have any ideas, let us know. All right, so I want to give big, big, big thank you to both Trivia Theater and What If Universe for go ahead and knocking out these incredible three-minute reviews. I love this idea. I love where it's going, and I think you guys are going to enjoy it, too. We got this unique take on the review structure of movies, and then we're also going to be doing a second variation, which you're going to get next week, three reviewers doing the same movie, giving you different perspectives of their own individual takes and style. I really like this idea, and hopefully you guys will as well. Participate. You can get involved. Even if you're not a big fancy schmancy reviewer, you want to review a movie, you want to be a part of this, go ahead and hit me up. All my contact information is below, as well as the amazing reviewer's information that featured on this show today. But I want to hear from you. I want to know if you guys want to do a movie. If so, all you got to do is be able to talk for three minutes with a decent camera and a decent microphone. If you have your own unique style you want to display, this is the place for you. So hit me up. Love to have you on. And again, thank you, thank you, thank you for watching. And thank you to Trivial Theater and What If Universe. That's it. That's it. We're done. See you later. You know, I got to hit, hit you with my final catchphrases of the evening. Like, if you don't have talent, have talented friends like those two. We'll see you next time. Keep it copious. Go watch a movie. Peace.